So, uh, welcome back. We're doing, uh, we're going to be completing Wireshark Lab, uh, DHCP. And, uh, it says in this lab we'll take a quick look at the, at DHCP. DHCP is covered. In home network, wired and wireless lands. To eat. So, just give me a Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh... It's a, it says it's a brief lab. We'll examine DHCP packets captured by a host. So, let's start. Let's get this going. So, we're going to begin by opening command prompt. So, we're going to go... We're going to go... Command prompt. There we go. Then we're going to type IP config slash release, which is going to release our IP address. So... Now we have no IP address. Uh, so then we're going to start up Wireshark. This is from before, so we're going to continue without saving. Now it says to bring this back up. And we are going to go IP config slash renew. And oh, there we go. All right. So this instructs your host to obtain a network configuration, including a new IP address. Wait until then. Enter the same command again. IP config slash renew. And then it says to do IP config slash release. And then finally, it's gonna we want us to do one more one more time. IP config slash renew. And then we stop Wireshark. You make this bigger for so we can see everything. So now. Yeah, that's what I have, so hang on one minute. So now we're going to go up to here, and it says to enter boot p, and that will show only DHCP packets. Oh, and it's saying boot p and DHCP use the same port number, 67 to 68. Um, so yeah, alright, we did that. So now we're going to go through and answer some of the following questions. Question one: Are DC or DHCP messages sent over UDP or TCP? Oh, uh, you can take a quick look at that. Let's see. Oh, so just open all these up. Obviously, it's. UDP it says user uh, datagram protocol right here. So that's the question to number one. And then number two asks us oh, us to draw draw a timing datagram illustrating the sequence of the first four packet. Discover offer request ACK DHCP exchange between the client server for each packet. Indicated the s indicated the source and destination port numbers. Are the port numbers the same as in the example given in this lab? And as you can see, I hope you can see it. Um, and it's really small, but they're there. It's 6768, same as the example in this lab. So we're going to move on to the next question. We'll just minimize this in case we need it. Um, what is the link layer address of your host? So, we're going to go here. I'll see if we can find it. Right here. The link layer of our host is going to be
I believe again. Uh hang on. I'm not sure. I think it's gonna be right here. One C six F sixty five twenty eight thirty and seven B. Yep. Alright. So the next question. What values in the DHCP discover message differentiate this message from the DHCP request message? So, let's go here. Just give me one minute. So we're going to go down here. And then we're going to go look at the request message. So, let's see. I don't know, the difference I see is that this is saying request and this is saying discover. So, the message type, basically. The next question asks, what is the value of the transaction ID in each of the first four discover, offer, request, and act? What are the values of the transaction ID in the second set? DHCP messages. What is the purpose of the transaction ID field? So... For the first four, let's see if we can find that. Let's just minimize these. Start here. The transaction ID and just gotta find oh right here. Right here. So if we go down four, and it changes. Uh, is used the to so that the uh, DHCP server can uh, differentiate between client requests during the request process. So then the uh, next question. Asks us, a host uses DHCP to obtain an IP address, among other things. But a host's IP address is not confirmed until the end of the four message exchange. If the IP address is not set until the end of the four message exchange, then what values are used in the IP datagrams in the four message exchange for each of the four DHCP messages? Uh, indicate the, sor the source and the destination IP address that are carried in the encapsulating IP datagram. Sorry, yeah, I had to go do something, but I forget what question I'm on. I believe I was on uh, question six. Uh, and the answer to question six is uh, these numbers right here. The client and the server both use the 255.255.255 and so on. As the uh, destination address, the client.